All right, folks. Um, how are we all this evening? Um, welcome, or hello from Scotland. This here is a, a little item I purchased off eBay just last week. Um, I got it very cheap. It's not something that I can really afford, to be honest with you. Um, even though I got this cheap, it's still more money than um, I can really, um, well, afford, like I said. So, um, this has been a long time coming. I've been waiting a long time to buy this. I remember wanting one of these when I was an apprentice. I'm now 45. <laughs> so, life has not been easy. I've had to wait 25 years for this. Uh, and anyway, without further ado, here we go. This is, uh, I don't know if you'll see that on the camera there, but this is a, a Moore and Wright um, Precision Protractor. It's from a estate of a, a Mr. Musgrove, a now deceased. And um, yeah, I, I'm I'm really pleased with it. Uh, the case is showing a little bit of signs of wear. You know, the, there's a bit of tape here which was covering the hinge. That's come away. Um, it doesn't seem to you know just fall shut correctly. So I don't know if the Maybe the hinges are bent or corroded in some way. Maybe it's just the padding is preventing it from closing correctly. Uh, there's only one latch left. The other one's missing. But that's you know, I got I got the case. I got it cheap. At least it's got the original case. Uh, that's nice to have, although it is a little scabby. Uh, the protractor itself, uh, as you can see, it has quite a lot of staining to it. I've actually already started cleaning it. Um, I've kind of forgot to um, show you on unboxing. But uh, there is considerable staining to the rear side, to the ruler as well. I can, you, know, you can feel it's rough to the fingertip. It's raised in fact. So that's all going to need to be polished up. Uh, the front is in worse condition here, at the front of the ruler anyway. Uh, it also has the, the longer, um, I'd say 12 inch ruler. Um, it's got some staining to the back. You can feel how rough it sounds. It's moving the rough there too. a shame because quite some effort goes into making these I believe but I'll polish it up the best I can and I'm currently just uh, polishing up this face here there's a really nasty bit of corrosion in the middle of it uh, so I've got the um, I took the scotch bright pad on the, on the Dremel wheel to remove the, the the light corrosion and I've now got some um, autosol um, placed on the front here and I'm using the, the Dremel to try and polish it out the best I can anyway. So um, I'll, get, I'll, um, I'll try that for a few minutes and then I'll see how we uh, get on and I'll come back. So I'll just pause it there for now. Okay, so um, I've I've tried polishing this up on the Dremel a little bit. Um, still not satisfied satisfied with it. Um, you can still see evidence of the corrosion there in the center, uh, at basically from twelve o'clock down to about the center, and there's specks indeed all over the the, the face of that handle. Uh, this is a sort of tightening um, nut, um, and you know there's there's light corrosion all over it so I'm tempted to put that into the lathe and um, 
try a diamond cutting compound on it, you know, something that's maybe a little bit more abrasive and where I can rotate this at high, well at as high speed as the ML7 will go and that will give a more uniform um, pattern to the polishing uh, much more like the turned um, turned uh, face that it is currently there is a one or two little uh, it's been dropped I think because there's, there's one or two little marks there there's a one there another one here a little dent there I don't know if the camera can pick that up probably not but there is a couple of little dents and bashes in it nothing severe just very tiny there's a little raised dent there as well so maybe a sort of a lapping action might be better initially just to polish that up and then a final polish on the lathe uh, that will give a nice uh, mirror finish to it you know so that's one of my thoughts on that um, I don't know how to tackle the, the back side of it because um, this is obviously a nice better kit this you know this you know the um, a lot of people don't appreciate this sort of stuff but I do um, I don't know if the camera is going to focus on the the bezel here but that's some very fine uh, engraving there um, and you can tell that that's engraved into the the metal it's not like a lot of the modern equivalents where it's a sticker or just painted on or sprayed on in some manner um, you can feel the the ridges with your fingernail that's actually cut into the material same on the bezel here and that's even Moore and Wright don't do it that way anymore. It's just too time consuming, too expensive. Um, what you'll often find now is they'll have a a bezel that's maybe been etched, for instance, and then it's just riveted on. Oh, it's horrible. Horrible. You know, you'll, you'll not get craftsmanship like this uh, for very much longer uh, because they're simply not making it now. So I'd, I'd really like to polish all these um, uh, items up, completely disassemble the whole uh, unit and refurbish it. But I don't know how practical that would be. Uh, to do so uh, for instance if I was to remove this part here would that is that has that been calibrated was that just simply held by these two little screws I think there's probably a lot more to it than just these screws you know you've got the zero and the zero that's very very precisely aligned on the bezel here You've got the zero at the top and the zero down here and that line is almost a continuous it is a continuous line I, using my eyesight i cannot see any discrepancy between that two zeros so to get that back to that sort of level of accuracy may be impossible with the um, equipment i have available so i'll probably leave that alone and just polish around it the best i can Rust, I hate rust. Why does rust have to exist? Anyway, uh, yeah, um, 10 minutes, folks. How about a go? Um, I've got to make dinner yet tonight. It's a Moore and Wright, Sheffield, England, number 994. K68 oblique 55 and it was previously the property of a Mr. P. Musgrove I believe uh, the man has now uh, passed on and they were basically selling his estate on eBay or 
some of the items from his estate. So I will uh, cherish this because this was an expensive item. Well, it still is an expensive item um, to buy new. But this was a very expensive item 20, 30 years ago when it was probably purchased. Pity it wasn't taken better care of. Yes, right. Uh, I've got logo, folks. Uh, enough harping on about. measuring equipment or marking out equipment until next time stay safe and oh now there's something what's that bit for is there something missing is that meant to be there maybe i don't know yes i'll need to find out all right bye for now